now having set that, I can now measure the height from the top of this to the bottom of the piling there and that dimension will allow this block to sit on the tabletop with the bench sitting across the so now I have this dimension established so then what I'll do I've used my table saw and what I've done is I've glued a block of wood with ACC on the side of the faceplate that's okay because that'll knock off and clean up quite easily afterwards and what I've done is I've used from the side of the blade to the inside of the block that dimension and then I'll take and I'll set the piling against against that block and then feed it through and end up with with all the pilings exactly this the right length so when I insert them in here flush with the top they'll all be exactly the same and that'll give me the base for the the uh, the, the first three tall bends So what I'll do now is I'll just press all these pilings that I just finished cutting uh, and make sure that the, the, the cut end is at the top and just put them in fairly loosely. When I say loose they are a, they are a snug fit. And and then nice flat surface like so and I can just you can hear, you can hear the, the, the tone the sound change when it hits the tabletop that way they're now flush all the way through here double check with a straight edge and they're all flush and what I'll do is I'll put some glue in here now and I'll sand that nice and flush when the glue is dry and then that'll be ready to set the bent on top of that. I've installed the bent temporarily, just loose, on the end of the upper track. And again, I put the level at the top to make sure it's level. And then I've installed the pilings that we just assembled. And they're just sitting here loose and I wanted to be sure that when I put those in that the bubble at the top in the level is dead on and it is so that assures me now that I've got the right height there and I'll just put the remainder ones underneath in exactly the same fashion and then that'll give us a good solid foundation now I know that the end of the the end of the upper trestle is going to be level This is just a test fit. I put some blocking underneath the abutments and I've completed the trestle at the one end by putting those pilings on the bottom and same at the other end, some blocking underneath the abutment. It's a little higher than the other one and you can see the effect that we're going to have with that really nice light trestle and steel bridge. So this is the view we're going to have and you can see through the trestle to the backdrop so we, we still get the ad advantage of seeing the mural on the back. Just another close-up you can see the retaining abutment over here and the dirt will come down on the underside underneath the pilings through there and across. Still get the river showing through and on the opposite side this one will have a little different topography. You've got the retaining wall over here in timbers and it'll fall down underneath these these pilings through here and then cut off the part of the the abutment here and then drop away to the river and now the 
temporary display at Cimarron. I've installed this last bent at the end of the trestle and this one will sit on the stone abutment right beside the end bent of the steel bridge. And what I've done is I've put large square washed nuts and bolts on the top of this beam here. And we don't want that to sit on the stone because water will sit underneath there and it'll rot the beam. So what we'll do is we'll put steel plates on the underside of each of these that will actually be anchored to the stone in turn with studs coming through bolted on top of here and that stiffens and braces the, the entrestle. So what I've done is I've taken some, some uh, thin styrene and I've cut them into 18 inch squares and I'm going to spray paint those a rusty brown and then I'll glue them to the underside of this beam here center in each of these NBW's here and that'll be the bearing plate that'll sit on top of the stone and that'll leave a little gap underneath between each one of these for water to flow through and then flush away. You can see here now that I've got this carrier beam here with the dowels which are the pilings going through it and that will actually sit in, in the plaster and the plaster will cover the, the bottom of this. I've flushed these all on top and glued them to the underside of the beam and we now will have some exposed pilings. I've sprayed those steel plates now with a little bit of black in rail brown so it has a deep bronzy color to it and then I'm going to take some rust powders and just scrub the edges. Nothing too, nothing too specific because these are the exposed edges that will show a little bit of a little bit of rust and then I'll use a little bit of this light sandy color because we just want to we just want to get some subtle highlights on those edges. This is all very very random. There's no rhyme or reason for for doing one or the other. It's just to, to give a little bit of character on the edges of the plates. And brush, brush it with a Q-tip fairly hard because we want that we want those chalks to to go into the paint. That's still quite tacky. These plates are going to not be any one particular color because the, uh, they'll be painted, they'll be galvanized, they could be any one of a number of finishes and, and uh, so we want this to have a little, little variety but we also want it to stand out a little bit. And, uh, and I could take um, just a slightly brighter rust, and again on a Q-tip, and just dab it in here, and just the odd one. We just want to catch the corner or an edge, just to bring up a little bit of rust. Again, because that'll all be it's all that's going to be exposed. Remember these are 18 by 18 plates and the beams are 12 by 12 so you're only going to get two, three or three or four inches on the edges that are actually going to be exposed. And you get some nice some nice variations with this chalk. Everything will rust slightly differently. So I think you can see that uh, has quite a nice effect to it. see the subtle toning and variation. And once I fasten those plates with a little bit of ACC to the underside of the beam of the bent, you'll see just those little tiny highlights 
along these edges just all exposed. One of the issues in trying to have the track at one end of a, a wide gap that has to be bridged with bridges and trestles is to get the two ends of the track at each end of the bridge at the same level. And there are multiple ways of doing that. But in this case, um, what I've done is I'm using a laser. And what I've done is I've set the laser up so that the laser sits on the top edge or right on the on the rail and I think this gives you an idea here you can see on the white paper and you can see what I've said done is I've set it so the laser is hitting the tops of the ties or you can do it on the flange of the rail as well and the same thing at the other end you can set it so it meets the other side in a similar fashion. Now this level, that, this laser that I'm using now uh, has a, an automatic level on it so it doesn't matter how I tilt it it's always going to be level. And uh, if you're going to have a bridge that is on a grade uh, then you can always take and uh, adjust the level so that it is on that particular grade that you, that you desire. It's a good way to, to, to match each end. And then at the same time, as I go across, and I'm going to get the trestles at each end down here, when I, once I get that level, then I'll be able to make sure that the level here, this is just set in very loosely right now, and you can see the significant difference here. You now that bridge has got to go up, you know, to, or should I say, it's got to come down and to meet the uh, to meet the, uh, the the rail at that end. So I have shims at the bottom right now. So I'll be reducing the shims that'll lower this so that that laser is on the rail head or on the top of the ties. So whatever I do at the, each end, and I'll do the same thing. So you can see that is very very clear and easy to read. I've decided to start at this end here. And I've already got the timber abutment, which is part of the trestle. And I've got a temporary prop underneath here that will take some shims and be adjustable here. And I'll now cut the rail to meet the rail on the fixed end. And the rail, the ties are on here already. So obviously this is going to be level across here. But it's at this end here that we now have to do some adjusting. So once I get this, these rails spiked and joined here, then I'll just put this support underneath here just, just to meet it so that I have some, some physical support on that abutment. And then, and, and you can see, you can see the, the laser line here. And it's actually, it's actually sitting right on the top edge of these ties here. And then as I come across here, right now, the laser is on the bottom of those ties. So I have to actually lower this this uh, trestle this end slightly, and I'll do that by just adjusting the shims that I have presently on the underside of the of the uh, stone abutment. Once I adjust those, then that will be level, and then I can install this end of the pin connected truss and get that level across there. Then I'll move to the other end and then check the level in a, sim in a similar fashion.